it's recording on Facebook, but I want to record here too. So um, now that I started the video, I want to introduce my special guest again, Laura, almost in Mexico, artwork that she has done behind me, a shirt she gave me. So we're in the true spirit of Laura in Mexico today. Yeah. We're going to talk we're, about... We're in Mexico. Yeah, I feel like I'm in Mexico. in Mexico. I love it. Hola, amigos de todo México. Saludos y abrazos a todos. I love it. I love it. And I, I necesito practicar mi español todos los días. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about Parkinson's disease. You, Laura, live with Parkinson's disease. I'm familiar with your story and you actually wrote a beautiful piece for my upcoming book um, that tells about your journey, diagnosis, misdiagnosis, the process of getting diagnosed, your reaction to being diagnosed, and then you know, going through depression, going through being sad and down, and then deciding, okay, this is it. I'm going to fight back. And man, you're, I, we're going to talk about that and your experience and just in general, talk about Parkinson's and however, whatever organic flow we have to our conversation today. But so if you don't mind, um, and this will be in the new book coming out in February that I have, Par Par Parkinson's Empowerment Training is the title I've decided on. Um, you live with Parkinson's and <clears throat> you want to take us through a little bit of that journey as far as symptoms, diagnosis, uh, getting to diagnosis, and then your spirit of fighting. And you're always smiling, you know, you're always yeah. smiling. So take us on a little yes. uh, timeline. Of here. course, thank you. Well, first, I'm very happy to be here uh, sharing my testimony and the way I managed my Parkinson's disease I was diagnosed with. Uh, so to start, I would like to tell you uh, that my background, I'm from, from Mexico. I live in the border with the United States. Uh, I, my last studies were an MBA, Master in Business Administration in Texas A&M International University. Mm -hmm. Uh, I worked mm -hmm. in public and private institutions. Let's say I was a normal person with no, um, just uh, common and um, work and got married and had two children. They're now in the university right now, both of them. Yeah. Uh, as a little girl, I studied as all of us, as many of us, dance class, guitar, swimming, I mean, whatever yeah. kind of activities you want, you wanted to do. A little girl, to, little girl to do. So then, uh, when I was working, I was about 30, 30, 35, 32. I don't remember very well. Uh, people around me started to ask, "What's what's ha what ha what happened to you? Why are you uh, hands shaking? Why are you? Why are, why is your something wrong with your with your with your leg with your foot? I mean, it's look it looks like your something is very wrong with you." Yeah. I, I just didn't notice it at first. I tried to ignore those, those comments because I didn't like them, you know. Was, they, weren't, they weren't pleasant to hear. Right. So right. then right. my husband also told me, you know, I, I've been observing you that uh, you're, you're going slower. I mean, you're, you're walking is going slower. Uh, you're, you're shaking. Are you nervous about something? Is something worrying you? And I was really no. So I, I was really sad about this because I always I also noticed that my handwriting was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I didn't I really didn't uh I wasn't able to read what I was writing. Yeah. My so for those watching I'm sorry I'm interrupting. For those who are um watching and may not know this, it's called micrographia. Yeah. And it it's it's where the handwriting, uh, sometimes people will start out with bigger letters and by the end of a word or a sentence, they're down to, you can hardly write it and you can hardly read it. So it's called micrographia, just in case anyone wants to know. Yes. And I walked I walk slower. I gained weight because I, I didn't really do much of exercise. I just felt really heavy. My tremoring was... Uh, a big a big issue now because I didn't I didn't I mean I didn't want to do anything about it because I didn't want to hear bad news from a doctor. Sure. 
Um, my parents yeah. are doctors and my sister's a doctor. And they just told me, you need to go to a doctor. You need to go to your doctor. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm okay. So then I went to a doctor, a neuro neurologist. And uh, he told me, you're okay. I mean, it's an essential tremor. Uh, if you see my hands right now, they, they're not shaking. Uh, but then they just were. I mean, they had real, I had a real back, bad tremor. And he said, you're okay. Just take this medicine and you'll be okay. So years passed, years. And I wasn't getting better. I was getting worse. Uh, my, I couldn't, my, my legs, my arms wasn't good. Uh, I couldn't be standing up for a while. I mean, it was, it was just uh, unstable. I didn't fall, but I was really having a bad time. So I decided to go to Dr. Martin Mirel is my actual doctor now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's a neurologist and a specialized in Parkinson's and irregular movements. And he's the only one in my city with that, with that, with this kind of, uh, specific, specific, I mean, with this kind of degree. So mm -hmm. I just, uh, I and didn't want to go. I really didn't want to go. He's a neurologist. He's a neurologist specialized yeah. in Parkinson's, and he's mm -hmm. the only one in the city. I mean, I I knew I had to go with him, so I just got in. My two first steps, I, I took in his office, and he told me I was, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to reach the chair. I just walked to my first two steps, and he told me you have Parkinson's. Oh. I mean. I think he told me by the way I was walking, by the way of my posture, by the way of my hand. I didn't swing my arms. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I really had a lot of symptoms and they were, they were really, I mean, everybody could see them, right. but I didn't want to see them. Mm -hmm. So I just sat down and I said, what? And then he uh, explained everything to me. Why did he made a physical examination? I cried. I didn't cry there, but I cried later because I was unable to do any exercises. He told, he put me there. I was unable to do everything, and yeah. that made me so sad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> after that, he gave me a treatment. I mean, a medical treatment. He he told me you're gonna take this medicine, and you're gonna be uh, back here. I don't remember. Well, it wasn't a week or two weeks or something like that, 15 days, I don't remember. Uh, but when I got back, I said, oh, I'm just feeling great. I think I don't have Parkinson's. I was just real, so happy. And he told me, well, if you feel so great with this medicine, that's a levodopa, carbidopa. Mm. So you have Parkinson's. Yeah, right, right. And I said, I was really... This this uh Parkinson's thing, uh, I didn't know what it was, what it was. I mean, my my parents, as I said, are doctors. They're not working now, but I thought that Parkinson's are were only for el elder people. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't knew anyone with Parkinson's. Uh, it really caused an impact to my life. I mean, I was forty at that at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but going back uh, in time, I, I discovered that my symptoms maybe started when I was about around 30. Wow. But I stood there 10 years without doing nothing. Why? Well, I didn't want to hear what I, what I had. I, 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 know, I mean, I, I felt something was wrong with me. But I stood there. 10 years doing nothing about it. until I decided, well, okay, that was in, two, in 2013 when I went to the doctor, Dr. Mireles, here in my hometown. And well, we, I've worked a lot of in physical and uh, physical therapy for physical routines, exercises here in my hometown and around me in the state. There was no information. There was no therapies for Parkinson's. There was nothing. 
around me, I could reach out and say, please help me, tell me what to do about it. Yeah. The doctor, yeah. the doctor explained you have to do this exercise. I, I didn't have any, any therapist. I mean, I, I had nothing. Mm -hmm. And I just felt so bad about it. After that, I just, I, I said, okay, I left my job because I decided to put 100% dedication to myself because I thought I need to, I mean, I need to snap out of this. I need to do something about it. And I started doing exercise. I discovered there was a rehab center here in my hometown uh, called Cree. This is a, I don't know if you know it, know this word, but CRI, it's like a rehab integral center. So they don't have anything for Parkinson's, but they helped me with my uh, gait training. Okay. They helped me with my arm swinging. They helped me in general. So they uh, told me, okay, you're done. And I said, how am I done? I have Parkinson's. I mean, I need, I need therapies. So I went back about three or four times because I, I insisted I needed therapy. Mm -hmm. So they really helped me a lot. I, had, I received a, a great uh, treatment there, but nothing specialized for Parkinson's. Then one day I went to my doctor again and I said, okay, I've done this. I'm working, I'm working out, regular exercise, nothing special for me for, for Parkinson's. And I said, I told him, what else can I do? I mean, I'm desperate. And he said, oh, well, there's a guy named Carl Sterling. <laughs> and I say, what? Yes, look up for him in, in Facebook. I've seen some, some of his videos, I mean, in YouTube. So I looked up for you and I sent a message that day. And you answered that day. Wow. And you wow. told me, our next and last workshop in the United States is in Austin. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. was about one month or I don't remember exactly one month apart that day. And I said, okay, I'm in. And I went to Austin. I remember that perfectly. A kickboxing installation. I mean Center for Parkinson's uh persons. And that day, I mean that those two days in your workshop just opened my mind. The cognitive training. Mm. I mean, I was really, really. I mean, I didn't. I, there's so. Maybe they're not so complicated stuff. I mean, they're easy things, but I nobody had told me that. Nobody had told me about the barefoot benefit. Nobody right. had told me about the cognitive training. Nobody had told me about the respiration techniques. And then <laughs> when I came back here, I just can't I mean I was unstoppable I, I entered yoga I now practice multi multi-level yoga I run I walk I swim I could do everything thank god I think that uh the fact I the the, the fact I went I mean going to your workshop really opened my mind I didn't know I had to exercise my my mu the muscles in my eyes. I mean, I didn't know I had to move them. I didn't know that. So many things I didn't know. I wasn't aware because there there wasn't any information around. It. So as time passed by, I just really said I have to do something, and I just worked out and worked out and worked out. I even told my therapist what to put, what exercises to put me, what we, what we needed to work on on my right side of the body without uh, leaving aside my left part of the body. Because my right side is the most vulnerable. I mean, it's the, the one that is affected the most with the Parkinson's. If you see me walking right now, there are no, my neurologist, my doctor tells me, I can't see the Parkinson's. I know you have Parkinson's. But if I see you walking, I said, you don't have. I feel so blessed and I feel so happy to have voice, to have movement, because I could reach out to other persons with Parkinson's disease 
and share this information and share that there is hope. There is hope how? With a medical treatment, with a nutrition program, with exercise, with therapies, with Parkinson's, Parkinson's regenerations and empowerment training and just a great attitude. I mean, we're alive. We're, we're, we have this COVID, we have this pandemic. I think I thought at first, oh, I mean, what, do, what, what is COVID doing to me? Nothing. I mean, I have, I have Parkinson's. I thought Parkinson's was it all. I mean, what else can you have? Mm -hmm. But no, I, Parkinson's is just a disease. And I, right now when I hear Parkinson's, for me, it's only a word of a disease. It doesn't define who I am. It can limit my movements maybe, sometimes. And I just get up again, I said, you're not gonna stay here, Parkinson's. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna be happy. And I smile and I move and I walk and I just stretch out and do my activities, my yoga, my routines, my respiration, my meditation. I just do everything about not letting the Parkinson's. I don't open the door for Parkinson's just to get and get comfortable there. Mm -hmm. I feel a little bit uncomfortable and I know it's Parkinson's, you know, but because I also learned something else. Not everything is Parkinson's. Yeah. You have it here in your mind. Oh, it's because of my Parkinson's. Oh, this this hurts because of my Parkinson's. No. You have you have a you have you have to change that attitude and think. Well, maybe it was because I exercised a lot yesterday. And it's just muscle pain. I mean, exercise pain, a little mm -hmm. bit of exercise pain. And I, I feel great when I feel that because I know it's not Parkinson's it's because of the yeah. routine. Well, you know, that's, um, I'm interjecting for a minute here. You said so many things that I'd like to comment on. Okay. So one of them is, let's start with what you just said and move backwards. People with the Parkinson's are people too. It doesn't define you. It's not who you are. You aren't Parkinson's, but also not everything is Parkinson's, not everything is MS, not everything is cancer or Alzheimer's uh, or whatever diagnosis, if we have one. Uh, it, with me, an autoimmune blood clotting diagnosis. Not every pain in my leg has to do with a blood clot. As a matter of fact, since the surgery, none of the pains have to do with blood clots, although I kind of wonder, but no, it's not. So other things can happen. You know, people uh, living with Parkinson's, cancer or, or let's just say parkinson's uh, a movement disorder um or no disorder or no dis or yeah or no disorder you can have other problems because that's life yes you could have maybe you need a new shoulder a new hip maybe you need cancer surgery hopefully not right but but there are things that can go wrong so not everything is the diagnosis and as a matter of fact it depends on the person but sometimes there's more non-diagnosed issues than there are diagnosed issues. And that's really- maybe I'm sorry, mm -hmm. maybe your, your mind just creates them because you know what, how to justify yeah. them in your disease. Mm -hmm. so I think so. Let, and Don't let that happen. Yeah, I think that it's important to, um, yeah, I mean, I so I have this autoimmune thing and whatever, but I don't really think about it much because it doesn't affect my movement and it just affects a few things that I should probably not do. Um, but so I don't know what it's like to have a diagnosis that like Parkinson's or anything, but what I love though, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring you here, meet with me right in Mexico, we're in Mexico. Folks. We're in Mexico. We are in Mexico, Mike, <laughs> this is in Mexico. It's from Mexico, San Luis Potosí. Um, is that um, your mindset towards this, your attitude, your perspective is uh, actually inspires me tremendously, but you inspire a lot of people. Russ Parker is watching. Russ is another one and you know Russ. In fact, Hi, Russ. when we met you together, it was Ruben, Russ, yes. me, and then uh, Dr. Um, um, Christy, Christy, Christy O'Neill. Uh, Stuart. Gillespie, oh, yeah. he was yeah. there too. Yes, yeah, and Christy. So we met you, and uh, it's going to be two years yes. in May. I think May. Yeah, mid May. 
because I went to Mexico first, then I went to Austin, and then I went to Singapore. That's right. Singapore. Okay, all in a month. Okay, so yeah, it was such a great meeting, and I remember you being there. And I'm getting off track, but I know what I'm coming back to. Uh, one of the things sometimes certain people stand out. Um, you stood out to me in that workshop. It really just had to do with your smile. I actually didn't. Mm -hmm. I would never have guessed you had Parkinson's. And then when you told me you did, because I figured maybe you're just there to learn or you're a physio or you're a trainer and you're going to go back and help clients or patients. Mm. And then you say, I have Parkinson's. You got to be, you got to be kidding me. You're smiling and I don't see anything going on. Like there's no visible symptom that I could see. And, you know, every, everyone is, uh, yeah, Russ, Russ says, you inspire him too. Keep oh, telling your story. Yeah, we're going to bring Russ on to have a chat here uh, in the very near future. Uh, next I love, week. I love uh, your salsa dance. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember, so it, well, <laughs> I get excited. So sometimes I go off my path of what I'm thinking, but I, I, th I've, I keep learning, like every day I keep reading things about, you know, the brain. And this, my latest, well, and actually, no, it's not the latest, but this book, for example, uh, uh, the virtual background makes it so it's hard to see. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's the end no. of all. Uh, oh, there it is. The end there. of Alzheimer's program. And I interviewed Dale Bredesen about three weeks ago, and it was it's on the YouTube channel. Uh, he also wrote this one too. That's the first book. So the the one I just showed you first, though, that's the recent book. This is a great book. The next one goes into more of a management strategies but see the thing is the reason i bring that up is because he talks about and he's a medical doctor and russell is with parkinson's you live with parkinson's other doctors say that the patients who are doing the best now this is a, i'm painting with a broad brush this is a generalized uh I'm, I'm speaking in general terms, but in gen generally speaking, the people who are doing the best are the ones that have the kind of positive attitude that you and Russ have. You know, and not everyone, we've seen some fighters, uh, sadly, who uh, I remember a gentleman that uh, Allison and Russ, uh, Ruben and I met, yeah, Allison and Ruben and me in Denver, and he passed away last year, but it wasn't, for, you know, it had nothing to do with Parkinson's. But man, that guy was a fighter, bilateral deep brain stimulation. He did really well, you know? What what took him out in the end was completely different. And uh, but his his mindset was like yours and Russ's. And I think that um there are a couple things here, and then I'll turn it back over to you. But the main thing is all of us, uh, you know, I was talking with um Jeez, who was it the other day? I was talking with a doctor and, and he brought out a, a, a really interesting point saying that all the organs in the body and our skin is an organ, right? I think it's the biggest one they say. Well, they change over time, but they change. They just change. And the brain is an organ, but the brain is the one organ that we can choose to make change and it's not just well I, it is actually all this stuff about perspective and thought process that's actually neural neural firing patterns if you look at the uh, some of the M imaging from i think it's mit massachusetts they have the imaging of people uh who were in depression and negative thoughts all the time and then on their way to becoming more positive and feeling like you said earlier, unstoppable, um, hopeful, optimistic, goal oriented and driven and feeling up their yeah. brain imaging changed. So the, the neural pathways actually developed around their mindset, which is actually so fascinating. So it's not just learning to do a new thing. It's not just learning to you know, play catch with the ball, say the alphabet backwards and jump over hurdles at the same time. Yes, that'll change the chemistry or the uh, circuitry in the brain. You develop the ability, anything you develop an ability to do, the more you do it, the more the brain changes to 
cause you to do it better, but your brain can change to become more, let's say efficient, functional, maybe healthy in its power of free will. Oh, I know who it is. It's uh, Dr. Andrew Huberman. I wasn't talking with him. Uh, he talks on his podcast about this, uh, this thing that the brain, we can self-direct our attention, focus, efforts, actions into uh, doing things and thinking different things, choosing our thoughts. It's a hell of a lot easier said than done, but you know, sometimes you just think bad stuff and you can't help it. But so you're, you and Russ and uh, a few other people, you know, Angelus, I remember watching her go from hope, hopeless to unstoppable in a matter of like five minutes. And you're, you are living, walking, breathing proof that you can choose your attitude, your perspective, and everything you do, all your actions. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yes, I would like to share this uh, with you. I really put a great uh, work. I mean, I worked out a lot. Uh, I can't say I had pain because I had, I was really, uh, I had a really tough time with rigid, rigid rigidity. Mm -hmm. And uh, my muscles, I mean, they just couldn't stretch out the way I wanted them then to. So we worked them out. And uh, when I was done with that, when I had flexibility, because I, I as I say, I, I practice yoga and that has helped me a lot. Well, one day I told my teacher, uh, my yoga instructor, I can't do this. I mean, it's too hard for me. I just put a lot of effort into it and I can't do it. Help me. How can I just go over this process? Mm -hmm. And he told me, because you're doing everything wrong. You're doing everything. I mean, all, of, all the things you're doing, they're all wrong. How, how can you say that to me? I mean, I have Parkinson's because it's not the way, it's not the effort you put in the, in, in the activity. It's not the effort you put in the yoga. It's mm -hmm. how you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's how you enjoy it. So there and just, I mean, it snapped out. I mean, snap, I snapped out of that and I say, oh, really? It's all true. I mean, when I walk, I, I was just thinking about walking exercise, improvement. I mean, it was all mechanical. I didn't let my emotions work on that. I mean, I, I left my emotions aside. So one, uh, that day that I discovered that I had to enjoy it, that I could be able to enjoy my exercise and whatever thing I was doing, that day also changed my life. Why? Because I, I was aware that I didn't have to do it because I had to do it. Because I was, it was something, it was being imposed to me because I, I'm, you have to do this to get better. Okay, I have to do exercise. I, I love doing exercise. But most of all, I enjoy it. I enjoy the air in my, in my face. I enjoy the sunlight. I enjoy people. I mean, I enjoy just breathing. I enjoy mm -hmm. everything. I enjoy my movement, stretching out, seeing people. I mean, that's what really life's about. We're here to be happy. We're here to be enjoyed. And the thing, the thing you have Parkinson's, I mean, that that's a, doesn't have anything to do with you enjoying your activities in a daily basis. If you have Parkinson's or if you don't have Parkinson's or any, any other disease, or if you don't have a disease where you're going through a tough moment right now, especially with the pandemic, and COVID-19 and everything had caused and death and everything within this. You have to, you, you have always two decisions to make, be happy or not to be happy, enjoy or not to enjoy. You have to, sometimes you have to just overcome situations because you have to think in you. And when you have Parkinson's, the first person you have to love is you. And even if you don't have Parkinson's, you have to love yourself to why? Because if you lo love yourself the, in the first, number one, you're number one. And remember this. Mm -hmm. Parkinson's, as you know, doesn't have a cure. So you have to love yourself so you could eat better, have a, a, accept the medical treatment, exercise. And once you 
have achieved this, you could offer the, the ones around you a better quality of life because you gained yourself a better quality. So there is real hope. And I'm so happy to share this with you all because it has worked for me. I, I know for it has, I mean, it might not work for everybody because we are all different. Mm -hmm. But you can try and make an effort first to smile. The thing you smile, it doesn't make you, maybe the person's in a difficult situation. If you smile, it makes you stronger. If you smile, it makes you feel better because your brain thinks you're better. Do you know that a smile actually changes brain chemistry? Yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, you, you may have told me that. And then somebody told me this and I went and I looked it up. I couldn't believe I didn't know the details about this and I can't recite the details properly. But if we were to say it real in simple terms, smiling changes brain chemistry and it's all good. The changes are good. And you could look, I mean, you could be like this and I could just be speaking like this or I could be like this. It changes everything. It does. It changes how I feel. It changes how you feel. It changes how other people feel too. Like you could have been frowning in Austin and I probably wouldn't picked up the, <laughs> well, I don't think you can. I was so happy um, to be there. So it's kind of funny. This is a total sidetrack. So I have these two lines right here, right? I don't like them. You know, what those lines are from, <laughs> it's not from frowning. It is from the extreme right. light sensitivity I've had in my eyes for years. I've had eye issues. I, I had a cornea transplant recently and everything is bright. I have these soft light boxes here and they're really bright. So I'm kind of squinting a little. These are my squint lines and I really want them to go away because I don't want people to think they're frown lines. <laughs> so, okay. but you, you know, you have so many, uh, Russ Parker again, uh, I love him like a brother, love you like a sister. Uh, great insights. It's a great insights, Laura. And, and, you know, I was thinking the same thing when I saw this come up from him. See, one of the things that I've been learning, I'm a very late bloomer. I have learned so many things that I can do to change my quality of life. Um, you know, after I turn 50, I'm going to be 60 this year. So it took me a long time to figure stuff out. But even in the past year, um, I, I say actually maybe two years since the blood clots, it changed everything for me because I was really scared. I'm Singapore, half a world away, 12 time zones away, wondering if I'm going to die. And I almost did, but I didn't. So here I am. But, you know, it was really, really close. But th that was the beginning of a change where I started to actually enjoy the now. And yes. I'm in a habit. And that's the, the good thing. Yeah, it's a great thing. Um you know, a lot of us, and I still find myself doing this on a frequent basis every single day is thinking about the past, but more so thinking about the future, maybe worrying a little bit, although I'm a natural born worrier, I've come a long way. So I'm not worrying so much because anything I ever worried about pretty much never happens. So why worry? It's a waste. But sometimes it might be smart to do, but most of the time it's not. But being, it sounds like you are living in the now yes yeah, so i was wanting to, to uh interfere with them I mean, interject uh mm -hmm. i really don't ha don't have anything to worry about you know uh, parkinson's disease is a well you know better it's a progressive chronic disease uh it doesn't have a cure so why worry i just live the moment i just live the moment and i know it's the present because it's when i inhale and exhale that's my present and that's the thing i have to work on the right now i don't worry about my past i don't worry about my future i just work on my today i enjoy this moment the moment i enjoy is this one the one i'm living right now i really i i, I know my future can i don't can't predict my future but can anyone do no. So no. why worry? I mean, I know this this is I know it's I have one of the tough ones, but I don't have the I mean, there's a lot of persons who are uh really had just helped me a lot with their experience and with their testimony of life. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and doesn't have Parkinson's. They have a lot. I mean, they have a disease that are more painful as cancer, as many other diseases. I mean, they're just teachers for me. They're grandes maestros, mm -hmm. as in Spanish, I would say, of life, of experience, of work. And to live a simple life. They just live happy in the moment, at the, in the present. Because that's all they have, the right now, the today. So just smile and be happy about this right now. Share, be happy. Right. You know, it. Um, a lot of people talk about this and say, you know, this is all you have is right now. And, and it yes. sounds a little cliche, but it's also the truth. It's a fact. Yes. And... I, uh, I've actually found that my quality of life has gotten better when I focus on the now. You know, you made a really important or really relevant statement saying um, you take a breath, you inhale, you exhale, and you appreciate it. Well, there are people right now who can't breathe. They're on ventilators because of COVID, right? So, or whatever reasons, there could be other reasons, but sometimes it's it's these simple things or basic things that are supposed to happen automatically because you don't usually we don't go walk around thinking about our heart beating and our lungs expanding and contracting but geez when it gets taken away from you yes but look. but you then you start to appreciate it and uh but to be able to appreciate it before anything happens i think that's even better i and i never thought about well i have thought about it but not lately i haven't thought about my present right gift right now is I just got to breathe in and out again. Yes. You know? yes. Uh, a person with Parkinson's does know that. Or uh, maybe another disease too. Why? Because you're not able to walk. You're not able to move. You're not able to stand up. Right. So that's what I share. Don't worry about tomorrow. Why? I mean, work out, do exercise, move. Be happy right now in this present moment the way you are, appreciate it. I mean, just put it in a scale and say, am I more happier right now? Why? Because I'm breathing, because I can't see the sun, because I have my family with me. Yeah. COVID-19 yeah. is a tough deal to handle, mm -hmm. but it has also, if, if you want to see it this way, we can learn about it. We don't have a tomorrow, we have a today. So take care. I mean, this is not in the in this in this program, but wear your face mask. Be careful. Take care. Uh, I mean, you don't have to have Parkinson's to take care of your person. You don't need to have Parkinson's. No, no. That's what I want to say is, mm -hmm. you have to live the moment today and really uh, value the things you have. Be you're blessed. We are all, all blessed, even if we have Parkinson's even if we have another disease or if you have no disease at all, just be grateful of your moment right now. Exactly. You know, uh, I don't want to go down a road that is no, it's too back. sad for anyone, but I will just talk about yesterday when my dog passed away. Um, it's the first time um, I've been with any, any, anyone, any, anything living be a thing that, that died on its own. You know, we've had an animal put down a couple of times this and that. And it was uh, gut wrenchingly, heart wrenchingly sad. Uh, but you know, she was struggling to breathe at the end. And so that and, and, you know, being with her and comforting her is the only way I could, and, you know, Tammy too, hands on and talking with her and she knew we were there and knew we, she was loved. But, you know, there are people dying too who can't breathe. And man, I, I got to tell you, man, thank you, Jan. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. I, I choose to, uh, uh, you know, I was up for about three hours last night looking at photos and videos, you know, and I, I have this one that my daughter sent me. Well, actually I have it cause I sent it to her, but she sent it back of Zoe, the, our dog that passed away uh, yesterday morning with baby Nora, my granddaughter, who's going to be three months old on February 2nd. 
uh, 12 weeks old yesterday. And it's like baby Nora um, and Zoe, Zoe loved baby Nora, right? And she was sniffing her and it's just such a cool video. So that was a fun time. I get to remember these 13 years almost of uh, fun that we had, you know? And so that that's a gift that I can, she gave to us and I can keep giving it to myself. Now I'm getting a little bit off track, but I'm trying to um, put this all into perspective. And then watching her take her last breaths, uh, didn't I didn't think about this at the time, but I've thought about, you know, I was just re reading, I think Niall Rogers. Niall Rogers is a, a musician who's an amazing talent and his mother just passed away and he was with her to the last breath. And that, that every breath we can, every breath is happening at the time it's happening and it's the now and it's something we have. And yes, it is. It can sound so ridiculous, folks. I really understand this, but guess what? It's not because you could just got to take another breath. What if you can't take one next week for some reason? And I hope that doesn't, I hope that doesn't happen to anybody, but that put me in the now yesterday kind of readjusted me a little bit to be more in the now, even though I was on that path. Of course, talking with you helps me too, always. You're a good therapist for me, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, You're... folks, about the Kleenex. I still a little bit of post-COVID symptoms, but I'm doing really, really well since I stopped gabapentin, which saved me in the beginning, but I had to get off it because it caused so many problems. I'm sorry, I got off track. So what else is on your mind that you feel okay. is important to share about anything at all? Anything yes, I have some points here I, want to I would like to share. Uh I'm working with, I'm, I'm collaborating with Parkinson's Art Gallery in London. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Parkinson's Art Gallery is a space for Parkinson's, uh, for persons who have a Parkinson's disease diagnosed. It's a space where we can exhibit our paintings and where can, we can exhibit our poetry or any art our hands or our minds create. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's free for everybody who has Parkinson's. You can exhibit your art there. If, if you need more information, just can, can contact me or directly to Parkinson's Art. It's in Facebook, it's in the web. And I was named Parkinson's Art Ambassador here in Mexico. And I'm not so much for the name of ambassador, but I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm more about helping other people, sharing, because why sharing? Because if I see your art, if I see your paintings, I really get motivated. That really get, gives me strength to keep yeah. on going. Yeah. And uh, I just can't see your hands creating, your mind creating. So right. we can say to persons with right. Parkinson's, you can do it, you can create, you can be an artist. You can, I mean, you're, you're, what you do is important for me and for other pe persons. It can be inspiring, it can be motivational. So please share your, your work, share your art, share your poetry, share who you are. And if you don't like art, but maybe you like sports. Yeah. I have people, uh, I know, I mean, I know people around the world who uh, maybe are, uh, are in the bicycle or maybe are there any uh, other exercise routines. I love seeing their videos, sharing information, sharing what the, they, are, they have helped and how. <clears throat> How their exercise has helped them, and I just love them sharing. And we just wanted to add that. I also want to uh, comment that about the emotions. Mm, yes. How please. does Parkinson's people? I mean, what what do proper, what do does a person who has diagnosed feel? If you ask me, how do you feel when you get when or when you don't get uh, or you're not having a good day? I really can't tell you how is my body aching or how is my body struggling to, with this. But if I paint, for example, in my case, I just could throw out all my emotions there in the painting and just let my mind rest, mm -hmm. rest of top, rest of worries and just paint. That could happen too when you make an activity. When you are exercising, you just go and just leave your mind to rest. You need to, to rest your body, but you need to rest your mind. Mm -hmm. Just focus. 
focus and need it out of top, just nothing in there. Why? Because a person with Parkinson's is always worrying about everything. I don't know if everybody, but you're worrying about, did I put the uh, laundry in the, <laughs> I mean, no, we're all, we're, uh, did I clean up this? I mean, That just reminds me, I have to flip the laundry before I go. Out <laughs> I mean, we always start thinking, <laughs> yeah. you know, when I, some years ago, I just, I thought, I, I mean, I think I had a, a really square mind because I couldn't see out of that square. Mm -hmm. I couldn't dream about anything. Going to New York, going to the, Europe, yeah. exercising, moving. I mean, just playing, moving my arms. How could I move if I have Parkinson? I can't move because I have Parkinson. So when you so say, just let a, your mind off. Mm -hmm. Just let when it go. When you say a, a square mind, it's like, it, do you mean that you're like stuck inside of a box? And it's, you can't I mean, inside? like you don't, you're not able to think more outside of what they have told you you have for okay. example you have parkinson's you're not going to be able to move you're not going to be, be able to blah blah blah, uh, blah yeah okay so what what do you what do you have to think or what 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 have i done well they have told me that maybe i could have the symptoms and if i present the symptoms i have presented tremor rigidity well i'm doing something about it i'm mm -hmm. not saying just there in my couch no i'm just going to do something about it if i don't feel good well i'm just gonna play with the ball and move my wrist and be happy and okay uh tell my husband just tell me something about about your day why because i'm, I'm moving my hand i'm moving my wrist and he's telling me so i'm focusing in another thing while i'm moving and that helps me a lot and that just gets me out of my comfort zone you know and it yeah. helps me with my emotions because if my emotions are good my symptoms are better mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. work on them not only rehab not only exercise not only uh, therapy occupational therapy working with your hands work on your emotions work on regenerating your mind work on that because that will help you a lot it will help you if you are if you smile but if you believe in yourself not only in what they tell you to do, or, what, or not only in what, what could happen to you. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in yourself. I could do it. We could do it together. You know, the, the I'm going to interject for just a second. So the first chapter in my next book coming out is uh, the, the title of that is Hope, Belief, Empowerment. That's the name of the chapter. And it really has to do so much when you when you see um, I, I tell you I think about Angeles every time because that was my person. there was the most uh, em, empowering thing I've seen. Um, well, it was just so because she yeah I tell the story she was sitting you know kind of like Ernesto grumpy she says yeah. Well, I can't learn from this guy, this guy from the United Maybe States. Maybe she had probably... her square mind. As oh, I say. totally. And she had chosen to be pretty much bedridden for about a year before that. So Ernesto said, no, you're going to go to this and I'm taking you and I'm dragging you in if I have to. So she comes in. So I noticed her, her um, posture and disposition changed over the yeah. 90 minutes. And then I had to run to uh, a, a room to take off my suit and tie, put on workout clothes. I had no idea what I was going to do. I, I don't usually have a plan in these situations because I want to see what the needs are first. And so one of the things that came up when I was saying, okay, we got 55 people here. What, what are we going to do? What kind of workout? What would you benefit most from? A lot of people have a fear of the floor or they have a fear of falling or they can't roll over. We're like, okay, we got 45 minutes of doing the floor is our friend workout. That's the, what I call it. The floor, because the floor is our friend. Once you go down or you're on the floor, whether you chose, got there deliberately or you fell, hopefully you're not hurt. You, you may need to roll over. And if you can't, well, you're stuck right away. Right. So she's down on the floor and I, you've heard the story um, and some others may have, but this comes, comes back to what you said about believing in yourself and being empowered. I looked over, I saw her, she was crying. Ernesto is beautiful Sophie. I love Sophie. She's such a 
beautiful That's girl. Good. And uh, we just had so much fun. Sidetrack. So we, I stay at their house. We drive, you know, Ernesto drives us around and I take her shoes off and I hide them. And, you know, <laughs> cause I just like to take her shoes off because she likes it when I do it. We play games. It's so much. Sophie, if you ever see this, we love you so much. You're the best. And Ernesto and Annalise too. Bottom line is they're over there helping, looking at her. They're right on the floor with Annalise. And she had later on that day, I found out she rolled over for the first time by herself, no assistance, five years. Okay. And you know what? So we saw somebody go, what will you say this? First of all, she started to have hope. She believed there was possibility and she definitely got empowered because she is unstoppable as you know. Yes. And I went yes. back two months later and she started running again, uh, mainly because we put these things in her shoes, which you're familiar with. Oh, probably can't. And I've also insult. Yeah, it's hard. To... There, it goes. Oh. there. there it is. Yeah, the textured insoles. Um, I'm sorry, Mary Hernandez. She says, no entiendo. Um, no, oh, okay. no uh, hablo espanol muy bien. And uh, there's something I want to look for. If you have something you want to say to her, I want to bring something over yes, and show I, it. I'll be, right I'll be right back. Uh, a las personas que nos están viendo en este momento en los diferentes grupos de Parkinson, voy a hacer este después de esta face live, voy a hacer un face live en español sola, eh, compartiéndole con ustedes lo que estoy platicando ahorita con Carl. Sé que en muchos grupos de los que estamos ahorita compartiendo en Face Live en, en, a través de Facebook, este, sé que está en inglés, sé que muchas de las personas no, es una barrera para entender la, la conversación, pero con todo gusto y con todo mi amor y cariño, ahorita terminando esta, esta plática con Carl, que me siento muy honrada de estar aquí, compartiendo con todo mi con todo gusto lo voy a compartir en español en un momento más. I can't find what I want. It's a uh, um I just told them that after this I'm going to uh make like a well, when we finish, I'm going to explain this sort of in Spanish so oh, they can just understand what we said right here in the in, in this program. In this, Beautiful. This And our friend Silvia Gabriela Oh, hola, Silvia. Hola, Silvia. ¿Cómo está, mi amiga? Un abrazo grande, Silvia, hasta Monterrey, Nuevo León. Un abrazote. This is so amazing. So what I was going to show you is um, some pottery that was given to me, a, 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 like a, a big mug, and I think it's upstairs in my upstairs office, if you will, uh, made by a gentleman who has uh, generalized dystonia. So it's a movement disorder, it's not Parkinson's, but he does pottery. And like when, when you talk about emotions, you talk about art, you talk about exercise. I can also say that music is another thing that tends yes, to it. change the brain. And yeah. you know, this book here, I show it almost every time I'm on the neurologic book of... There, oh. there it is, Neurologic Music Therapy. Yeah, now this book is a little pricey, is about $50 US, but that goes into the science of what's happening in the brain when you are listening to or moving with or creating music. And it's actually really interesting, so interesting. But this stuff happens with art. It happens with um, this gentleman, Ian, who made this beautiful mug he does pottery. So his, his symptoms, because he has quite a, a lot of movement going on when he does pottery, when you do art, when Adriana made this for me, this Adriana oh. made me this, uh, uh, the virtual uh, background really messes it up. Uh, no. <laughs> ah. Oh, come on, virtual background. Let's well, I may not be able to get it, but it's this beautiful box that she made that uh, I, I have things in it now, business cards and all that, but it's a beautiful thing. And so these forms of expression, these forms of creativity. Um, oh, Jan, I'll, yeah, I'll hold that up in a second, Jan. Um, these forms of expression, they do stuff chemically yeah. in the <laughs> brain. And then that Another, another, this is a generalized thing, but it generally helps to reduce symptoms. 
did. including anxiety and depression, which is so common with Parkinson's. Jan, the book is called The Neurologic Dancing Handbook of um, Neuro uh, Neurologic Music Therapy. It is it's the best book I've ever, ever, ever found on music and the brain. There's another one by uh, Daniel Levitin called This Is Your Brain on Music, I think, which is very good. It's, it's definitely worth uh, reading. And dancing. You just said dancing. I heard you. So that's something, Russ, I don't know if you're still with us, uh, yes. but he'll, t yeah. he'll talk about this in his own way. He and his wife do a lot of ballroom dancing and other things, and he's learned all these different styles. And, and so I have video of you and your husband. I think of your husband. I don't know if he was dancing with you, but Salsa. definitely you dancing while Russ is leading the dance. Jan, when we were when we were out there, you're welcome, Jan. When we were out there in Detroit, I didn't do dance at that point. The whole program has changed. So at some point, and we have so much more information now. In fact, we give about 12 hours of pre-workshop information. And then when we get there, we have two days of stuff to do because there's so much now. But anyways, talk to us about dancing. How does that how does that affect you? Well, you know, I just I just love dancing. I, I always love dancing. I love singing. My my daughter, my I mean Alejandro and Mariana, who are my children, I mean they, they play guitar and I'm the voice there. <laughs> I mean just sing out. And I dance and I this this thing about dancing and singing just enables you to move better, to get this rhythm in your head yeah, and yeah. just enjoy it. Everything, I, I just think it's about enjoying, yeah. enjoying yeah. what you do. And, uh, and talking about sensations and emotions, you have to activate your senses, not only just listening, moving, smelling, tasting, Remember those cookies your grandma made you? Remember that smell of her kitchen? Oh, yeah. Or maybe your, your mom, or maybe just your, your <laughs> house. All, all of that senses, just activate your senses. This is all kind of stimulation you receive. Just, I mean, just everywhere, just make an explosion of, of stimulation through your senses, through your smell. Maybe you, you can't remember when you were a child, when you were little. And you just got some special place and you just, oh, my grandma's doing this. Or, oh, my mom just made my favorite soup. That stimulation gets to your brain. And yes, it, it yeah, reconnects yeah. and just opens. I mean, you, you're, you're better explaining these terms, Carl. But I just work on myself, on stimulating my senses, every form and every kind that I just can't imagine. For example, I, I, I tell my mom, I can't see her because of the COVID. I just try to protect her. But I, send me your, your my favorite soup. I mean, say it, so I just could just smell it. Mm -hmm. And listening to the to the music I love and singing music, it's different. I, I learned that from you. It's not the same kind of stimulation. So active yeah. feeling That's in this the book air, too. Feeling that the air in my face. Mm -hmm. As I'm walking, as, as I'm in the bicycle, just feeling the air, feeling mm -hmm. the sunlight. That's another kind of stimulation. Barefoot. I love being barefoot. Yeah. Just touching yeah. the ground, touching the grass. But most of all, enjoy. Enjoy life as it is. Uh, that is like the best advice to give, I'd say. that, And it's also the most relevant because, like you say, right now we – have now i don't have two minutes from now yet and when i get there <laughs> it'll be gone and then i only have that now um by the way jan and other people i want to make sure i just explain that this book first of all it's has a real real heavy heavy uh, well the index is great um i've worked also a lot with uh, people who are let's say they live with some type of autism or on they're on the autism they're in the autism spectrum disorder population or arena or what what have you and fragile fragile x syndrome is another one i've done a lot of work with um, people there this book talks about all this stuff so it's not just about parkinson's as a matter of fact it's more about other stuff way more about other stuff than parkinson's 
but it's really about being a human. You know, it's about the brain. It's about ADHD. Uh, there's another book I just got. It's on audiobook called ADHD 2.0. It's by a gentleman who is uh, I've gotten to know over time here. He's written many best-selling books. He's a Harvard Medical School professor. He's a doctor, MD, jo Dr. John Rady. So um, the reason I say that is because Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, some kind of developmental disability, learning disability, fragile X syndrome, whatever, or no diagnosis. Yes. All okay. of this is for all people. All of, all of these things are for everybody. And you know, I, it's funny because I have a sketch pad now and a bunch of different colored pencils. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm about to get it set up because I've never drawn a thing in my life since middle you school. Enjoy it. And so I think it's time for me to express a little and see what happens. But I'm going to have to be in the now when I do it. Sometimes it be... we don't know what we feel. I mean, yeah. what am I feeling? I don't know. I can't express that. But when you yeah. paint, when you just put it in paper, a lot of things feel. I can't wait for people to see your artwork on the cover of my next book. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you. Thank you for considering me painting for your book. Can I add something? Uh, yeah, and I just want to say welcome, Chris Garcia. Hola, mi amiga, como esta? Te extraño. Uh, can't travel to Mexico. She's in Mexico City. She's an amazing, wow. amazing lady. I like this. Uh, well, I was going to say in Spanish, I forgot. Uh, I would like to uh, mention to the global community, to all persons with Parkinson's or no Parkinson's, to caregivers, I would like to give my appreciation to all the caregivers of Parkinson's or any other disease. They don't have an easy job. I just wanted to say thank you. I want to extend my arms and embrace them mm. and say, be patient with us and be loving and supporting. That's what we need. And sometimes we're not the, just the best persons, but we don't have it easy either. So I just, just want to tell Thank you to all the caregivers and to the global community, to all of us who are in this society, in our own local communities. Please be patient with Parkinson's persons who have Parkinson's disease because when you see a person who can't stand up well, who can't take their money out of their purse, or maybe can't just tremoring all around and moving all around. It doesn't mean that they're drugged or, or they just have a couple of drinks. You don't, let, you don't need to let them out of the, the place they're in. Just be patient and just, you could just, uh, I mean, right now I'm, I know we have a pandemic and everybody is, or well, I hope everybody's taking care of themselves their own way. But be patient and maybe you, could, you, could, you just could, uh, reach out and say, can I help you some way? Or I'm here if you need help. Or just be patient if you're in the line to pay uh, some of your groceries or anything. And I'm certain that they're not gonna say, I have Parkinson's, please be patient. But think, this person might need help or maybe in, in a tough situation, just be patient, please. It's not a good, I mean, we, have, we don't have it so easy. And I would like to tell, ask for everybody who ha is be seeing this face live to be more sensible, to be more sensitive to the person who has a Parkinson's diagnosis. It's not easy for all of us. For some, uh, so for some of us, uh, you might not even notice it, but from other of us, you just can't see it all the Parkinson's symptoms. That. And that's my vulnerable uh, side, I just uh, uh, suffer, or I just would like to everybody be okay, and that's why I share this information with you. And I open my heart, and I open the book. I open the pages of my book to you and to everybody, because I want to share what the person with diagnosed and Parkinson's feel. It's not easy to share. It's not easy to just come out of their houses or out of, and, I, and say. Hello, I have Parkinson's. Please be patient with me. Mm -hmm. Just take that in mind. 
I appreciate uh, you listening to this. And again, just smile to them and treat them as a normal person, but with a little bit of patience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was so beautifully um, spoken, eloquent, beautiful. And, you know, I, I know you pretty well. But I also know it's genuinely, authentically from your heart. You're not just saying words. You don't do that. And we're the same in that regard. I, I think that um, uh, I'll just interject something here because I'll admit that I have a tendency if somebody is rude to me, maybe in the store or the other day, getting a cup of coffee somewhere. And I, I, I really just wanted to say something to her like, what the heck is wrong with you? But you know, she might have maybe her dog passed away that day or the next the day before, and she just can't be in the now and can't be in the moment, can't communicate with people. And, you know, I really, really try not to let anybody bug me like that. Um, that day, I wasn't feeling real good. That was on, I think, Saturday and uh, or Friday, one or the other. And it doesn't matter. But I, I'm over there and I'm and D is here. D Oakley. Hi, D in the United Kingdom welcome is I remembered wait a minute wait a minute I I have an option I don't have to be like nasty back to her and it's not my nature to do this so I started asking her hey where'd you get those earrings because she had these really nice earrings on and all of a sudden everything changed now does that make me special no all I wanted to do was have a good a better experience and sometimes a little attention Maybe one question. Oh my gosh, where did you get that sparkly shirt? Oh my gosh, Reach out. your hair looks great. You're not flirting with them. You're giving a compliment. And, and then the whole thing, it's like, oh, well, I can't be nasty to this guy anymore because he likes my earrings. And, you know, I think that sometimes, uh, and I've gone out, I'm kind of, oops, uh, known for doing this is when I was traveling uh, many times, I'd go out and just walk around and look at things, talk with people. Some of the people who I talk with don't have a home and I would spend time with them and I never carry cash with me. I absolutely never, ever, ever have cash. So I don't give cash to anybody. I might buy them a burger or a cup of coffee if there's something near, but more than anything, um, even though they're asking for money, they appreciate time and attention and conversation, interaction, way more than a dollar. Yes. And I learned that, but also know that I know this sounds really cliche. This is the truth though. Everyone has a history, a past. Everyone has a story. And you know, the lady giving me coffee the other day, I don't know what her story was. I wasn't there long enough to find out, but it ended up being a nice experience. People on the street, I remember one night in Chicago, this guy, Tony in a wheelchair, we talked for about a half an hour. I apologize. I'm sorry. I don't have any cash to give you. Can I get you a cup of coffee? No, no, no. You gave me attention and time. Nobody does that. And it doesn't make me special, but I can learn from anyone and everyone. Every single person has something they can teach us or many things. So what happens is I feel empowered after I got my coffee. I felt better because maybe I did something that made her feel a tiny bit better because I would rather have everyone feel better than worse. Okay. It makes for a better world, a better living experience. And I think it's, uh, I'm again, I'm a late bloomer. I haven't done this for that many years, but I watch people like you and others who I've met, who I learned from and I realize what's really important. I think for most of us, other humans. Of course. There are people alone in this world. I go to places where I work with patients, clients. They're alone all the time. They're, they can't go out of their rooms and their facilities. I have one lady who yells out to me when I go in this building, says, hey, will you come and just talk to me? So I'll go talk for like two or three minutes and then go see my, my person who is alone. They're so grateful to have a human connection. You know, we're all masked up and all that stuff. But yeah. So I went off, but you know, it's all relevant. It's all relevant. And you're the one who prompted me to think of this today and how I've been trying to approach people 
lately. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking time to join me today. Um, oh, thank you. I don't want to go. I, I should go in about three, four minutes because I've got to move, get moving and go down and work with some uh, couple of people today at the studio. But I have a question for you before we sign off is I didn't tell you I was going to ask this. But you'll 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 answer it. You okay. already know the answer. If you were to give a, a statement to the world, to the people, that was uh, uh, advice, maybe the most important advice. What is that? What would you tell people? Generally, or about my about Parkinson's? Generally, and then let's do both. Okay. Well, generally, if I have to make a statement to people in the world. I say, smile more, laugh, love, enjoy life. Those are great. And if I have to say to Parkinson's global community, I'd say, there is hope. Keep on working, keep on moving. You're not in this, we're all in this together. Here's my hand, here's my mm -hmm. smile, here's, here's my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I'm here with you, we are not alone. And just reach, I could just wanted to reach out to them and share what I know and share what has helped me and just smile. Smile because that can change it all. Exactly. And just yeah. keep on yeah. moving. I can't uh, think of any better advice. That's really, that's really great. Every time I talk with you, Laura, I gotta say, even our, our messages back and forth often, I always get this positivity from you. So you inspire me, you inspire Russ, you inspire Sylvia and so many people. So we're, we are grateful for you. I appreciate this very much. Thank you. And could I add just one? Um, more line. Absolutely. I would like to appreciate, I would like to say thank you to all the persons. I mean, COVID-19, it's definitely a big issue and we're just uh, working out this together globally. But last year, I, I have to say I had some positive things going out for me. For example, what? Through the Facebook, through all of the things we have in the internet, I met many people. I met yeah. many persons with or without Parkinson's disease. And they are my great teachers, my grandes maestros, as I say in Spanish. Mm -hmm. All of the persons I know with Parkinson's are very special, are just great persons. I love to meet them. I love to talk to them. They just make me empowered every time I just talk to them. I want to say thank you the persons who collaborate with the Parkinson's community to Carl Sterling. And I would like to say thank you to the institutions, foundations around the world. Thank you for, being, for just being there for us and for just trying. And I know you're just caring about us and you're just trying to make a better world for us and for us to have a better quality of life, I would like to say thank you. I really appreciate that. And we really do think about you all as persons who reach out and and just and, and we know you all are there for us. So I just wanted to say thank you. Many blessings to you all. Thank you for persons here in Mexico and around the world. Thank you. I love it. That's, uh, you're right. There. Sorry for the echo. There seems to be um, a lot of support in the Parkinson's group, Parkinson's population. And, you know, if I was to, comp not, not to compare, that's the wrong word, but like in the music world, I was talking with a couple of different drummers last week and I was a drummer. So there's one thing that's really interesting about the drum community. And that is that we're, there's a, like a brotherhood, if you will, whether, you know, female, male, it's just this, yes. this, this bond between it. We don't even have to know each other, but if we get together in a group of drummers, 
we're all like best friends. We all have mutual respect and admiration. Admiration. We don't. We're, we're not competitive like some other instruments can be. Those people. <laughs> yeah. But there's also a lot of brotherhood in the other, and you know, guitar players and bass players, whatever. Drummers do have something special, and I feel, and from what I've seen, and it's actually kind of a lot. These different uh, organizations around the world where I've gone and they've sponsored to have me come in or whatever. This is the same thing in the Parkinson's community. There's a special kinship bond, a, a bond that is there and you all are part of wanting to help each other. Yes. And that's great. You know, because I could, when I speak, for example, with Russ, I could almost see through him because I just see a lot of things of him in me. Yeah. And that helps me a lot because, for example, when I see him dance, I just could go with his steps. I could just go along and dance better. Yeah. And when a person just tells me what they feel, I mean, sometimes I feel the same. I could even say I'm just reading their mind. Yeah. Right. We have a lot of, you know, I don't know why this happens, but we're a strong community. We need a lot of support, more support. We need, uh, Law enforcement, I mean, by this, I mean, protect persons with Parkinson's, help persons with Parkinson's around the world, not only in the United States, not only in Mexico. For example, you know, the case of Uganda in Africa, in, in all of the yeah. countries, there are persons with, with Parkinson's. And I just would love to reach out and help. That's my just, I mean, just dream about that go out and help people with Parkinson's around the world. I think you and your husband and Russ and me should go to Uganda and meet up with Hanning. Maybe Omotolo can come. Um, yeah, they're, uh, he's, I'll tell you, Hanning is doing a lot. He's, and is somebody, I'm sorry. And is somebody, I mean, you're a lot, you're an inspiration to me. You're, a person who I've learned a lot and keep learning. And that's why I told you someday I do want to keep on learning. I want to go to uh, World Parkinson's Congress next year to yeah. learn more. Bar Barcelona. 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 I want to go there. Oh, God willing, uh, all the things could be together for me to go there. I mean, economically and health and everything. Mm -hmm. Go there and meet people and empower myself to get all this information and get back here and just share it and just boost it. I mean, I just need that uh, uh, feedback. I just need that feedback to just input and then output, you know? Yeah, it, I'll tell you, it's a great conference. I went to the one in 2016 in Portland, Oregon. And then I was supposed to go from Singapore to Japan to go to that one two years ago and I, I couldn't because of the health issues, but um, yeah, that's a great, great conference. And I uh, fully intend on being there as God well. Will be there. Russ, you in? Let's go, man. Well, listen, I should probably go in a minute because uh, okay. I got to get some things ready to go over to the studio. And uh, I have a lady coming in. Uh, she inspires me so much. She's 80 years young, I say. 80 years young because she has a mindset much younger. She has Parkinson's and she is a fighter. And man, she, I'll, you'll see video later posted of her. She just moves so well. And I, I, I love working with her. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go get ready for that. Thank you. Everybody who's Thank watching you. D Russ, Chris, Martha. Yeah. Russ says he'll be at WPC. Okay. Boom. Okay. Well, we'll see you, you there. Russ. Yeah, that's cool. So, uh, yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in, and um, uh, we'll do it again sometime. Thanks, Thank Laura. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Appreciate it I'm so really much. Very happy. Your words of wisdom are the best. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, everybody, for listening for being here. All right, my friend. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Laura, and I will um, be in touch with you really okay. soon because i expect the book cover to come any day from the graphics person and then we're going to take a look at it okay be great. all right okay thank you thank, you, thank everybody. you laura thanks everyone have a great day great day to everybody thank you bye bye, bye.